crossing the sound barrier is much like crossing the speed limit on the highway. You don't really notice anything. Um, when, to cross that, at least in F-18, because we have a lot more weight than most fighters, is typically we'll do that in a descent. Uh, and we'll do that a full afterburner, uh, just dumping gas into the engine. Um, and so that'll get us over the fastest I think I've gone was about 1.28. Uh, but what's interesting, people don't realize, is that if I take that throttle and I'm an afterburner and I just bring it back and I'm just bring it back to mill, which is full power, just not afterburner, the deacceleration is so strong due to the air friction that it throw you forward in your straps. Almost, you know, I would say, you know, maybe like 70% as strong almost as, as trapping on the boat. It's pretty strong. Um, so it's almost like a reverse car crash just for the deacceleration. So the acceleration, you know, is usually kind of slow and you don't feel anything, of course, when you're crossing through it, but the deacceleration is pretty violent. The deceleration is violent, huh? Okay. Uh, but is there is there a fundamental difference between like Mach 1 and hypersonic Mach 5 and so on? Does it require yeah. like super special training? And is that something that's used often in warfare is that not really that no necessary? so hypersonic human flight in if it exists is not something that's employed tactically in um in any sense right now that i'm aware of so um you know when i think of hypersonic um technology i think of uh missiles and weapon systems and delivery platform i don't think of uh fighter aircraft necessarily i can think of bomber or reconnaissance aircraft perhaps but those would be more efficient, very long, long range. So I imagine acceleration would be kind of gentle, honestly. The, the thing you experience is the acceleration, not mm -hmm. the actual speed. Mm -hmm. 